Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, greetings and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa, your expert hypnotherapist. Well, you know, one of the things is I say I'm an expert in managing stress and anxiety. This morning, I had nothing but computer issues and everything and talk about managing anxiety. So sometimes what we have to do is laugh and release that stress uh, with laughter and joy. So for all of you who are here present, I welcome you. We have an incredible moment. Uh, Hill Talk Tuesday is going to be amazing today. Why? Because I'm just going to get straight into it because I want to introduce you to my guest today. I am so honored and excited to having Dr. Usha Manta here. Hello, Dr. Usha. Hi, good morning, Lisa. <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> yes, it is afternoon already. So with further ado, I want to introduce you with just a small little uh, bio. Um, Dr. Usha Manta is a diplomat with a uh, obesity and medicine. She is the founder and CEO of Verve Weight Loss and Laser Aesthetics, a medical spa located right here locally. If anyone is familiar with California in Upland, California. Having trained and received membership from the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecology in London, UK, Dr. Manta has been a woman's health expert for over 30 years. She doesn't even look that old, but she says she's been doing this for 30 years. So I take her word for it. She is a dual board certified physician in uh, obesity medicine in California, family medicine in Pennsylvania, but she is also an instructor and advisory faculty in advanced life support with obstetrics and advanced cardiac life support with adults. But today, today we're going to be talking about wealth, not wealth, I'm sorry, health, weight, and mind-body connection. So for all of you who know, uh, as a hypnotherapist and working with mind-body connection, I work with the emotional and mental aspect of weight. But today we're going to talk about what is weight and what what is this weight management that we all talk about so dr usha take it from here let's talk about managing weight and what is weight management so thank you lisa i know that was a little long um introduction <laughs> for you but you did it beautifully so so to my audience, hello, my name is Dr. Usha Mantha, and as you said, I'm board certified in obesity medicine and family medicine, and I have worked with women and women's health for the last 30 years. I'm really passionate about it because I trained in England in OBGYN, and mm -hmm. I have since then had my primary care practices around women's health. And of course, now for a few years, like six, seven years, I've been really passionate about obesity, overweight, um, just weight, you know, excessive weight gain period, right? So today I'm going to actually address that issue. And the reason is this, Lisa, I'm going to yes. talk to up, you about this in about four, like four parts, mm -hmm. very briefly. The first part is why, why do we worry about weight? Second part will be how do we measure weight? The third one will be, you know, like talk about what are the some of the causes of weight gain and very briefly what can be done. I'm actually going to try and summarize for you within the next few minutes um, as we have the time. So let us start with, first of all, is weight important? Why are we so obsessed about weight? But I have to tell you, Lisa, more than ever, this is the time to talk about weight. And the reason mm -hmm. is very scientific behind it. Being a scientist, I have to tell you, the increased pandemic or COVID-19, the morbidity and the negative effects of it, which was ultimately death and dying, happened in people who were overweight, um, obese, 
had all the metabolic disorders like diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, COPD, sleep apnea, and asthma. So mm. there has been studies after studies already identified the two big groups who got affected. One was, of course, above 65 year old because we do get heavy as we get older. And second set of people were under 60 years old, but they were all either obese and overweight and had comorbid conditions, as we say, like diabetes, wow. high blood pressure, cholesterol. It is a, such a striking difference that we have to come out of our comfort zone to talk about weight gain. Yes. So that is where I am coming from. And I have took upon myself now that I am actually going to come out and talk more about weight. So someone says to me, is all weight bad? I mean, like we have some heavy people or they look absolutely normal. They live normal life. Like what is going on? What weight is right. not good for us, right? So Lisa, I'm here to tell you that excessive weight doesn't always mean it's a bad, fa bad weight or bad fat or bad right. health because there are, the fat cells grow in size as we get older. And we are not so much concerned about if you develop fat cells in your arms, your legs and your thigh, but the fat Support. cells that are inside the abdomen, which we call as visceral fat, the fat right. that is surrounding your organs are our enemy. Mm. So we are looking to, you know, fight that fat because I want our listeners to understand there are two different types of fat in the body. So the one that women have in their breast, in their arms, in their backs, in their buttocks is not as harmful as the fat that is inside our belly, literally right. the belly fat, literally, because that belly fat is the fat which we call as visceral fat. It is under different hormones. It burns differently. It accumulates mm -hmm. differently. Right. So the understanding here is that we, do, we want to reduce that kind of fat because that is the fat that is hurting us. Okay. Okay. So that's the one concept of, you know, gaining weight and why we have. So if you ask me if someone is 75, 85 years old and they have stayed heavy all their lives, but that heaviness has not caused them any metabolic disrangements, then they are fine. They are not the candidates we are trying to ask to reduce weight. But if you are somebody who's 45 years of age and you have the excessive fat cells in the body or you know, weight in the body, that's especially in the midriff area, then we are looking for you for, to help to reduce the weight. Got it. So my audience, do you do you get this? It's the more of your core and belly button. It's what we hold on and pack on right here. Okay. So, so let us talk about, um, you know, what are the, like, how do we measure fat, right? So yes. we can say, like, because I have to say that obesity, you know, I have to call it by definition because obesity does mean that your BMI, that is the current we measuring the body mass index and i'm going yes. to go into it a little bit detail in a second so the definition of obesity is definitely your bmi is higher than 30 which is a number however actually in 2013 obesity now has been diagnosed as a chronic disease right by ama so what it means is we need to take it seriously. We need to actively treat it like we treat our blood pressure, cholesterol, sugar, you know, um, heart disease, asthma, sleep apnea. We need to treat obesity like a disease, number of one. Of course, because no? it affects us. Absolutely. In every way, yeah. So the obesity or heavy um, excessive weight can do two things. Either it can cause metabolically change your cholesterol, your sugars and stuff, or it can cause mass effect. When I say mass effect, it means that you get heavier, you cannot tie your shoes, you cannot mobilize. And believe it or not, the number one cause for knee arthritis in the country today is obesity. Arthritis? Arthritis, absolutely. Wow. Arthritis, no, single number one cause is excessive weight gain. If you go to the orthopedic doctors, if you go to the rheumatologist, the first thing they want you to do, Lisa, is to lose weight. Yes. If, you, if your knees are running out of energy or, or if your hips are going, if you can lose- There's too much weight on it. 
10% of your body weight. So remember, magic number is 10%. 10%. If you weigh 220 pounds average, then all you need to lose is just 20 to 22 pounds. It's not a big number if you know that 10% will reduce your pain, get your blood pressure better, reduce your cholesterol numbers, and sugars will improve. Wow. However, I am making it look like it's very easy. Obesity is a complex disease. Especially with teenagers and children also. Absolutely. And on that note, so why is it so complex? Why is it not just, oh, eat right and, you know, get exercise and you should be all thin? Why is it not that concept normal? Because it isn't normal. So whoever is telling you to just eat food, less food and, and work out more and you'll get thin, it's not true anymore, Lisa. It's not ah. true. Well, I do work with the emotional, mental aspect of it. Of course, sometimes we pack it on for safety and protective, but there are so many weight loss groups and everything they say, eat proportionized, eat. Uh, there's people who say eat with blood type or you have to eat only protein or you have to eat nowadays. I, I saw something, it talks about eat according to your hormones. So can you... Uh, shed a light on those, Dr. Mata. Yes. So Lisa, you are so right. And I'm so ha happy to have this discussion along with you because you are also someone who's very interested in weight management and you are totally spot on. So if obesity was just a mismatch because how much we eat and how much we you know, exercise, then right. it should be very easy two by two. Two plus two is four, but it isn't. And we know what, now why because obesity, the food that we eat, the energy that we put in the body is not directly related to what energy we conserve. Mm. There are four types of factors that are actually going to affect. So you can eat the same meal, I can eat the same meal, but there are four factors which are compounding how you accumulate fat or how I accumulate fat. Number one is genetics. So if mm. your parents have been heavy, if you're, um, so we now know that if your grandparents are heavy, your siblings are heavy, chances are you will carry that heavy gene. So you, chances are you will maybe reduce your, you know, fat from certain areas, but you will still carry genetically. Okay. Got and it. actually genetically on that note, if the child at two years of age and sooner develops more, like a lot of signs of obesity, we start testing them genetically. There are some gene tests available. It's not as easily available for adults, but they, we know a lot more about genetic testing now, number one. Number two, your biological things. The biological factors are that, um, do you know, Lisa, our brain is involved with our um, food digestion. Our of gut course. is involved. So brain has two centers. They act against each other. Our gut has something called leaky gut, which is a yes. topic of itself. Then our pancreas is pouring all the insulin. That is the actual culprit of why we gain weight. And of course, you know, rest of the body system. So this, these are the biological factors. This is the Correct. number two. So go to the number three factors is environmental. If you are given sugar food, if you are given a pop every time you are hungry, if you are given, you know, sort of all these like um, deep- It's a reward system for a lot of people. So that's it. So the environment, what is what food is available? What is not available? What are you throwing? Um, adversity, you know, excessiveness. I mean, you have cookies every day, bread every day, like dense food. So that is your environmental factors. So right. those are the three top of the things. Of course, the last and final is your own behavioral, you know, sort mm. of issues and factors. So these are the top four reasons why energy in is not equal to energy out. It's not. And even if you consume less and work out more, you may still not lose weight because it's right. more complex than that. And there are people who come to me and they say, I eat like a carrot. I eat an apple and I still don't lose the weight. There is so much, but their life is toxicity. There is so much anger. There is so much resentment that that energy, sometimes we think that it should fuel and burn, and yet they're just hoarding a lot of that. So and the, that is environmental as well. Absolutely. The and yeah. the reason is this, Lisa, the moment we go into stress mode or anxiety mode, and we have talked about anxiety, and I have yes. talked about anxiety, 
Now, another thing in our concept, we do know that we must know the fat cells are actually inflammatory. Mm. We know they are not inert. They are just not laying there dormantly that we are actually know that they are actively secreting hormones and enzymes that are actually causing our body to stay on an inflammatory state. So all my heavy patients and, um, you know, patients who are overweight and obese, uh, their body temperature is higher than higher. those who are not. Yes. So they already have an inflammatory factor. So it's not surprising that they can go through very easily develop the diabetes high blood pressure, cholesterol, depression, anxiety, sleep apnea, GI mm. side effect. So yes. now what happens is the food that we are taking in for energy is getting into our body and causing toxicity for us. Got so, it. and in the environmental factor, one of the things we, um, I could even go into the diet when I touch the diet one, but it's a lot of herbic herbicides and pesticides and preservatives. And, you know, all these are modifying us how we are, you know. May I ask you a question? So what do you talk, uh, what about the ones who say, if you do gluten-free, you release all the toxicity and the weight loss and everything? What is this big thing that started with so, being gluten-free? Okay, so I, this is the bottom line, Lisa, and I'm going to sum it up in one sentence, and it's only one sentence. Whatever the cause is causing your body to go into inflammatory state, be it gluten, be it herbicides, be it pesticides, be it additives, be it something preservatives, be it color. Some people don't like color. Some people like to match it to their alkalinization. Every single thing we are trying to do, Lisa, the ultimate result is to decrease inflammation. Beautiful. You know, obesity is associated with more than 10 types of cancer. I have to tell you the yes. sad statistics that every year in my practice, I'm a single solo practitioner, but I have enough women that every year I diagnose at least two or three breast cancers in my heavy set patients. I diagnose lung cancer in them. And I'm always worried about my heavy set patients that they're going to develop one. Why do you think it is? Cancer is also starts as inflammation. Cancer is and isn't it that, true that it's also directed very much to sugar intake? Okay, so the sugar intake directly, I don't know about studies that connect okay. direct sugar intake to cancer, but this sugar intake does something really more harmful, Lisa, and it does stimulate insulin. And mm. insulin is our biggest enemy when we don't need it, when we don't need it, I must say, because we do need it once you develop diabetes. Got it. Because we need insulin to bring the sugar levels down. And during the time we are developing diabetes, we are hyper super sensitive to sugar. Got it. So that is another topic of itself. But part yes. of why we gain weight with sugar is not so much sugar itself, but it's the insulin surge, which is bringing and hiding and holding all these, you know, sort of fat cells and keeping it in the body. It's not letting it out. We are not able to spend this energy. Any food we eat will create energy. We have no choice. Every time we, we put something in our mouth, it's going to create energy. And the body is very efficient to change this energy into fat cells and hide it. So what does it do? It starts hiding in the midriff area. You can't see it. You cannot see it. And uh, the way I explain is you go to tar um, Target and you get one ketchup bottle. You go to Costco, you get three ketchup bottles because it's cheap. However, you get that and now you can't consume three of them. So what do you do? You put two in the back and one in the front. If you have deep shelves like I do and deep belly, then I just put it and I forget. They go back and back and back. And then when, as soon as I'm done with the first one, I go buy three more from Costco. So mm. now we have pushed that in the back of the shelf and we bought some more. That's exactly the analogy for your belly fat. Every time you don't see it, you're taking your deep fried food. You're eating all these nice, cookies and ice creams and lastly the sugar is causing this insulin to create fat and it's hiding inside by the time we see our sizes change 1 1 10 to 12 to 14 we've already got enough fat we have already got about an inch of fat around our um, viscera we don't need that well dr usha someone like uh, queen latifa she's a big woman she is bodily uh, very big and confident and everything, uh, or even like Serena Williams. She is big and everything, but it's all muscle. 
So it's not our stature, it's muscle weighs also muscle weighs so Lisa, more than yes. fat. So Lisa, on that note, I want to clear, that is exactly what I was saying when I was saying in the beginning that it's not the just the body's mass, right? right? Because there is something called body composition analysis. So now we will take the body and we understand what is it made of. So of course, the, the, the very cruel way of doing is the BMI because of this ease of checking it. So it's easy to check your height and weight and put it into a formula to come up with BMI. And second is that it's reproducible. So most mm. of the studies when it was done, the BMI is the only way to weigh somebody. But if we do the BMI and say on Queen Latifah or Serena Williams, these girls or these women are genetically big built, number yes. one. Number two, they are very fit. So they have created in excess of 40% of muscle mass. Yes. They have, these athletes have less than 5%, less than 9% of fat. Mm. Less than 9% of fat. So... So let us talk about briefly what are the types, how we can measure obesity. So BMI is the number one. Okay. Number two is you can take a literally a calipers, like a, a um, you know, scissors type of thing and measure your skin in your arm. Okay. That will tell us how much fat you got. How, what do you mean? Like this? The calipers. Yes. It's done in places where you have fat and then you can just measure how much you know thickness it is and that's but how can someone old. measure it at home without going to a yes. nutritionist or someone yes so that is very easy so put an inch tape around your belly okay so what you're doing is you take your hips the top end of your hips and about an inch above it you mark it both sides so that it's really parallel and then you look at the you know, distance from your belly button and right at the top or at sometimes at the bottom of a belly button at the top of the hip bone, you take your inch tape and then. So that is a very good because remember we are only, I mean, we are very worried about visceral fat, right? So measuring abdominal circumference has actually been gold standard also, okay? Except the person who's measuring can make some mistakes, but if it's your belly and you are measuring every day, so chances are you are like doing the right thing. So okay. the measurement above 34 for women is not good. Above 40 inches for men is not good. Oh, and it's kind so of scary, for... Lisa. Some days mine will definitely measure more than 34, 36, but we must aim to keep it below 30 if we can. Below 30 for women. If we can, but up to 34, it's okay. After 34, okay. it's definitely not okay. Got it. For men, same thing. 35 is good. Above 40 is absolutely not tolerable. So abdominal circumference is number one. And then, of course, you can also measure the neck circumference. Again, oh, wow. if you have, yeah, if you have neck, like you can, you know, put your sort of like here, you can go halfway through you can mark it and do neck circumference now the neck circumference is a little bit little bit variabilities there but if you have a neck circumference that is above um for women again if it is more than 34 and for men again it's more than 40 then it's not good because okay. very high rate of sleep apnea sleep apnea we are testing so many people with sleep apnea that is another lesson or another message i have if you feel fatigued in the daytime if you are overweight and obese you absolutely have to be checked for sleep apnea because treatment of sleep apnea is like a magic switch that's right because the more the the better you sleep it is also good for your health and it's for your body very and also yeah it's very simple. The, every time you don't sleep, uh, don't breathe at night, which we call as hypocapnia, hypoapnea, Correct. it means your brain is not getting the uh, oxygen. enough oxygen. It's almost like you are dying and coming back, dying and coming back. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm exaggerating that, right. but it is equivalent to that. And that repeatedly will cause skin um, brain damage and ultimately heart failure and heart damage. So Sleep apnea, I'm very big on it. All my patients, I try and send almost 100% of the time. If I don't, I'm like... And for that, I've got a recording yeah. for sleep, for them to go into deep sleep so that they... It's, the recording about the hypnosis is uh, when we go to sleep to go from just regular to a deeper level that even if we sleep six hours, it's a profound deep sleep. And that can also help. I agree. 
I agree. So, so those are the main things, right? So mm. that is, um, so of course, doing a BMI with your height and weight, putting it in a formula is number one. Number two, you can do uh, skin calipers not used anymore. Number three, and most common is just use an inch tape and get yourself, you know, measure around your belly and you will know how far it is. And I think most of us women, we already, you know, do that. And next circumference is the next one. So these are some ways that we can measure the BMI, right? Beautiful. And I'm forgetting what other question you were asking, um, Lisa. You asked me a question I was going to address. Uh, just remind me what it was. You asked me, I asked about her, what I'm hearing about weight loss other than exercise, eat proteins, or it's yes. eat according to blood type yes. and hormone type, which is the first time I had heard it. Maybe, I mean, it's like hormone so, type. So see, that's, that's the saddest part about diet exercise, Lisa, I have to tell you. Um, it breaks my heart that, you know, everybody thinks that they are an expert in eating because obesity is so complex. It is related to one of the most essential, you know, activity of daily living, and that is eating. Mm. So now people, when they are a vulnerable group trying to lose weight, there will be as many people trying to come up with a remedy. But you and I have to educate our listeners, and I want to educate everybody, whatever we are suggesting is to reduce inflammation, and mm. remember that word, reduce inflammation at a cellular level, at a cells level, because yes. now we know the higher, the bigger the cells get, the more inflammation it will do. So whether you are trying to match to your blood type, whether you are matching to your hormone type, whether you are matching to anything, bottom line is to reduce. But I always have to say this and practice this. There are four or five really basics of weight management. And I think that will remain the core of what we do. Number one is of course your diet. So okay. here's the little pearls that I actually do longer versions of this is there are two things about diet. Number one, what do you eat and how do you eat it? It's pretty simple, that's it. It's, there's no more science to it. What do you eat and how do you eat it, right? I usually Usually tell all my clients and everything, uh, cut your food in half, don't hoard your food, and leave the last bite. So psychologically, you are putting whatever it is that you put in front of you, you are psychologically saying, okay, half is mine, and then half I can eat later. And even from the half, the first bite or the last bite is not mine. So psychologically and emotionally and mentally, we are not hoarding onto food, and we eat properly. So Lisa, it's so amazing. Um, so I think health and wealth is so important, right? Mm. And I'm doing health and wealth um, series with uh, Virginia. Yes. What you're talking is about budgeting your food. <laughs> you eat, I mean, literally, it sounds like that. If you ate a whole banana while you are talking to somebody on phone, guess what? I could check with you next day and you will say, yeah, I ate a banana. Let's not eat like this. So mindfulness. Yes. Okay, mindfulness, if you cut the banana, sit in front of it and eat one piece at a time, guess what? You will remember you ate a banana. You gave that respect to your food, which it yes. deserves. Unfortunately, exactly. in a very hustle bustle life, the last thing we respect is for food and we are working 24 seven for earning that food. So people, I have to keep that in perspective. I have to tell my patients the same day, I have to keep it. So the two things we actually really do pay attention is, what do you eat and how do you eat it? Mm. So number one, what should you eat? I'm just giving to give, going to give you just some guidelines because we can't go too much in details. Yes. Of course, we want hope this food, is very natural food, anything that grows, that anything that doesn't have additives, preservatives, herbs, uh, herbicides, pesticides, grains, whole grain is good for you. And natural food, fish is good for you. White of meat course. is good for you. And so on is nuts and grains and fruits and vegetables. Of course, a little bit of red wine is fine if you can find <laughs> your hands on it with this pandemic. Bottom line is this, I think anything you eat, you have to be thoughtful, mindful about it, number one. Number two, reduce your Amen. portion, which we have said all the time. However, and budgeting comes into that. So those are the important points. Then again, how do you eat it? If you eat it hurriedly, your body does not acknowledge it, and then you will stay hungry. Hunger is not a born phenomena. Hunger is a learned phenomena. 
Right. And stomach doesn't know what you put into it. The stomach distends and the hunger um, you know, subsides. Right. So please put some water in your belly. You don't have to have sugary drink all the time. So mm. that is very important, right? So how right. do we deal with hunger? So no those sodas. are important things about diet. Number two, very quickly, I know that you may not like this, but moving, activity, steps, whatever it takes, stay upright, walk to your car, I all have a step counter. Work. All those work. I'm so proud of you. So all those little things that are, of course, the, you know, we, we recommend 10,000 steps and some people say, oh, it's not necessary. It is not necessary if we do not pay attention to anything. Is it necessary right. if you want to stay healthy? Absolutely. It is necessary if you want to stay healthy. So exercise will matter. On the ballpark, we just want you to do seven days, five days of cardio and at least two to three days of um, resistance with some weight. Mm. It's necessary for your well-being. It's necessary for your brain. It's necessary for your bones. That's the number two. Number three is behavior. We got to change our behavior. We got to stop. If, if you ever want to immune, uh, increase your immunity and COVID-19 is showing us, maybe we are giving, we are given a, like a little breaks in our lifestyle to revisit what we are doing with our bodies. Exactly. We've got to get our bodies stronger. We got to get our immunity stronger and get, you know, let, not let this virus get us. We can't see this enemy. How are we going to protect it? Right? right. So we got to get our immunity stronger. You can take your vitamin D, you can take your vitamin C, whatever it takes, whatever you believe, please do it. Right. So that is our behavioral changes. Exactly. You know, uh, fighting it in a negative way and saying, oh, it can't do anything to me. That is obsolete. It's a single viral RNA. Virus, well, it is. It's become it's mandatory dangerous. for us to man Absolutely. our body. Absolutely. This is our obligation. This yes. is our societal um, you know, responsibility to protect the society so that if we don't become a burden on the society. We exactly. don't want people to be burdened. So that is important. So, and then of course, see a bariatrician because I'm a weight loss expert. If there are medications and there are surgeries. So medications are there to help you take away that, you know, behavioral therapy, that, um, you, you know, cravings. And we have some natural medications, some really powerful ones, whatever it takes. If you see an expert, medications are not all the way bad. It will get you to your uh, you know, goal weight. And from there, you can do your behavioral. Sometimes it's not easy. I can say mm -hmm. as many things, but medications do have a role. They are much safer. I'm not trying to push them. I have no interest in them, but I, that's what I do. And of course, weight loss surgery is available, Lisa. This is interesting because this week I have cleared two of my patients to go for weight loss surgery. These two will benefit because they are so ready to have the weight loss surgery and change their lifestyle and change their life forever. So that's all I have to tell. Well, that is wonderful. And for those who are interested in uh, being connected with Dr. Usha, I will put your information. Uh, the name of your uh, medical spa is Vebre Weight Loss and, uh, Laser and you are, <laughs> there you go. And you are in Upland, California. So we will put your information. Would you like to give your uh, website address, please? Yes. So to connect with us. And so our website is called verbmedspa.com, V E R V E medspa.com. And number two is call us at 909 377 2939. And Lisa will have that number for us. Of, of course. course, I have primary care offices and lots of phone numbers. So don't get this connect uh, like this <laughs> you will get to me or from our website the best thing is to go to our website and send us a form because that way we definitely have something we can track and we will get back to you and I, I and I thank you for giving the time I know you had a patient and she is waiting there yeah. but I love this I love our connection together because you coming from the medical world and me coming from the hypnotherapy aspect of even um uh, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about it. Dr. Lipton talks about it. Our cellular uh, tapping into our subconscious mind and doing this mindfulness and change of a behavior from the inside out, uh, releasing so much can affect and help with 
mind body connection it is all one yes we can do the diets we can do the exercises but we don't have to go and do 10,000 uh, steps of running or jogging or being in the gym you know what if you dance at home if you do zumba at home if you do every anything at home that moves even for people who are painting and cleaning that exercise in itself is getting your body rejuvenated putting you in joy in a happy mode and it is happy that makes it and i've seen people who are big and overweight but they dance and they release and they are healthy because muscle uh it, it is the muscle that they have built so yes that, the body composition analysis we right. do that what is your water weight and what is your muscle weight and your fat yes. weight of course protein do make our muscles and more the muscle mass the stronger you will be the better you are being shaped so on our uh, you know heavier like women that we talk about they are very mm -hmm. in shape i mean i couldn't think about serena williams like not being in shape right i mean that's of just course. the epitome of it so yes i agree with you it's the composition that matters you know it's yes. your, sort of what you are made of matters and we can change it and how you look at yourself and how you like yourself and all that matters so for that I thank you for the time that you have given us, Dr. Usha. Thank you. And uh, for all our viewers. And if you have any questions, let's see. How many pounds is it okay to lose per week that it will not harm your health? Uh, Dr. Usha, would you like to say this? Okay, so yes. Um, so here's the thing about how much weight is it? Is it not good to lose too much weight? The answer is, it's okay if you can lose one to two, one to three pounds a week, even then it's okay. Mm. I'll explain to you why. Like we said that the consuming the energy is not directly related to how our weight is getting on our body. Similarly, even if you lose one to three pounds a week, you're not going to go into any major metabolic um, disorder or anything like that. When we do the gastric bypass surgeries, these patients will come out, they literally cannot eat. They cannot eat for next three days, four days, five days. Mm -hmm. Patients in the ICU settings do not eat for months and months and months. Still, we bring them out of ventilators and we can. So we know from studies and after studies that a, it's okay to lose from anywhere to one to three pounds a week. However, it should be done the right way. You can't starve yourself. Beautiful. Exactly. You should not starve yourself. And that's another very passionate topic of mine, which will take another hour. We away. can talk and about that at another time because there's yes. people who eat and then they go and throw up and that's psychological and mind. So and that can be psychological. It's okay to, yes, it can be. It is okay to lose one to three pounds provided it's done the right way. You cannot starve your body. You can do intermittent planned fasting, but starving is not allowed. So if you are on medications, though, I do have to suggest that you need to let your primary care doctor or your weight loss expert doctor to talk about but one to three pounds a week is not a whole lot because we do 21 pounds in six weeks so it does come down to that because my patients will lose anywhere between one to three pounds a week mm -hmm. beautiful so, yeah so and someone says i'd like to lose 30 pounds well i'm sure 30 pounds cannot happen in one month and it is about moderation so that the body does not go into a shock either it doesn't actually matter if you have six weeks six to eight weeks you should be able to lose 30 pounds up okay. to eight weeks. so let us put it like this uh, one three pounds a week okay so that is about 15 pounds uh, like 12 pounds a month so that's, you know, two months, 28 pounds. Yeah, it's That's doable. Good. Yeah. It's doable. doable, provided done the right way. Exactly. And if you are on medications, if you are a diabetic, blood pressure, cholesterol medication, especially diabetes, you absolutely should be checking your blood sugars and then talking to your doctor so that if your blood sugar goes low, high, then they can connect it. But per se, losing weight will not throw you into many things. However, it's just the mind. You have to be prepared to do it and do it for the right reason. Do it for the long term. But yes. of course, I get a lot what of requests. What is it that requests. you want? Yes, I do get a lot of requests for reunions and for weddings. And in the beginning, I thought, why would they want to do this? But now I think, you know, whatever it takes, 
whatever your most uh, you know ultimate goal is it's perfectly fine of course i want to look good at reunion i don't even i was so ugly as i was a girl so i now i want to look very nice for my reunion because i don't <laughs> want to look like i used to do so i don't and want to all the motivation to right best, yeah best foot forward after 40 years of reunion and nobody recognizes anybody <laughs> right so i have become more like you know pet, like i have more sympathy towards reunions and weddings if you are the mother Correct. doesn't matter i'm not the bride any longer but i would like to look good in my own self i mean it's perfectly fine so whatever the reason is it's worth doing it yes and for that i thank you and i thank for uh our audience and we have another one says how much protein daily Oh, very good question. Before I go, okay. So my favorite diet is Mediterranean diet. You must have already figured that one out. Of course. <laughs> and um, the amount. This is very easy way to remember. Okay, about fifteen hundred and less calories, please. If you want to actively lose weight, you may, may go have to go down to thousand calories. Okay, but if you are fairly active, those days are gone when we were telling eighteen hundred calories. We are not active enough. We are sitting at home. We can't afford eighteen hundred calories. In front of computers. Home. So 1500 is the max amount that's calories. Mm. Then remember three numbers and you will be good. 100 grams of protein per day, if possible. 50 grams of carbohydrates per day. Oh, actually 50 grams of fat per day and 150 grams of carbohydrates. So there are three numbers to remember. 50, 100, 150. 50 grams of fat, 100 grams of protein, 150 of carbs maximum. Now the low carb diet or ketogenic diet, that's another whole topic. In that you can bring it down to, you know, from 150 down to 100 to 75 grams of carbohydrate. But I have to tell you, I want to sneak this little, this cup here. I know you didn't know I was drinking that, but that is loaded with carbohydrate. If I drink one Starbucks, I am done for my carbs for the day. Wow. So you can't afford too much, but remember 1500 max calories in a day. If you want to lose weight, go down to thousand calories. Number two, 100 grams of protein, 50 grams of fat, um, and 150 grams of carbs maximum a day. It adds up very fast actually. So those are the numbers. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Dr. Manta. <laughs> and for all our viewers, thank you so much for being here. And you know what, Dr. Manta, I think there is another subject that we can talk about the psychological effect of uh, weight and everything. And we can do that in about a, uh, a week or two. And sure. would that be okay? That would be perfectly fine. Awesome. I'd like to go over the behavioral and yes. uh, there are feeding, there are some eating disorders. Again, I do want to say we'll that. We'll go over exist. all that on a next yes. episode. They exist. So I would like to go into detail because there are sure. therapies for it and we should address it properly. Of course. <laughs> Of course. Yes. And uh, thank you for all of you for being here and for all of you who are here. Send hearts and uh, your emojis. There you go. Thank you so much. And for all of you who are watching this on a replay, hashtag replay, ask the questions and Dr. Manta and I will get back to you and I will invite her to come back on our show in about two weeks and let's see how this works. So until next Hill Talk Tuesday, I wish you all a wonderful week and God bless you and may the universal light surround you. Bye-bye.